Warren Buffett is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Since Mr. Buffett took over the company in 1965, the company has been making 20% annual returns, and that is significantly higher than that of the S&P 500, which only makes an annual return of 10%. With the great investing experience that Mr. Warren Buffett has, and by looking at his investment accomplishments over the years, we can all learn from his mistakes so that we too can get high returns from the stock market. In this video, we will learn about the 8 mistakes every investor makes. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can get notified of every new video and this can make your investing journey easier and also prevent you from burning money. Now, mistake number one, late reaction time or stop. This mistakes we made by far, I made that we made. These mistakes I made by far are mistakes of omission. I say basically hold. I mean, the, the idea that the European news or a slowdown in this or that or anything like that, that would not cause you if you owned a, a good farm and had it run by a good tenant. You wouldn't, you wouldn't sell it because somebody said, here's a news item, you know, this is happening in Greece or something of the sort. If you owned an apartment house and you got the raise your rents a little, it was well located and you had a good manager, you wouldn't dream of selling it. Uh, if you had a good business personally, um, um, the local McDonald's franchise, you, know, you, would, you wouldn't be thinking about buying or selling it every day. Now, when you own stocks, you own pieces of businesses, and they're wonderful businesses. You can pick the best businesses in the world. And to buy or sell on current news is, 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 is just crazy. You're in a wonderful business. you got people running it for you. You know you're going to do well over five or ten years. And to think news events should cause you to try and dance in and out of something that's a wonderful game. It's a terrible mistake, so get into a bunch of wonderful businesses and stay with
got an 800 number I call now whenever I think about buying an air, airline stock. I call them up any hour. That Fortunately, I can call them at 3 in the morning, and I just dial and I say, my name's Warren, I'm an aeroholic, you know, and I'm thinking about buying this thing. And then they talk me down. I mean, it takes, it takes, it takes hours sometimes, but it's worth it, believe me. We don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to, to do it in a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. I mean, you've really got to, you got to grab them when they come, because they, you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and every big financial, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You'd get very rich because you'd think through very hard each one. I mean, you went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company you didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. There's a temptation to dabble, if uh, particularly during bull markets. Uh, uh, in stocks, it's so easy, you know. It's easier now than ever because you can do it online. You know, just you click it in and maybe it goes up a point and you get excited about that and you buy another one the next day and so on. You can't make any money over time doing that. But if you had a punch card with only 20 punches, you weren't going to get another one the rest of your life, you would think a long time before every investment decision. And you would make good ones and you'd make big ones. And you probably wouldn't even use all 20 punches at the, in your lifetime. when stocks were way cheaper. People behave very peculiarly in, in, in terms of their reactions because they, they're human beings and they, they get excited when others get excited, they get greedy when others get greedy, they get fearful when others get fearful and they'll continue to do so. And you will, you know, you will see things you won't believe in your lifetime. you find the, the prices of a great company really offensive, if you, if you feel you've identified it, and by definition a great company is one that's going to remain great for 30 years. If it's going to be great, a great company for three years, you know, it ain't a great company. I mean, it, uh, uh, so you really want to go along with the, uh, the idea of something that if you were going to take a trip for 20 years, you wouldn't feel bad leaving, leaving uh, the money in with no orders with your broker and no power of attorney or anything and you just go on the trip and you know you come back and it's going to be a, a terribly strong company. Uh, I think it's better just own them. I mean, you know, we could uh, we could attempt to buy and sell some of the things that we own that we think are fine businesses, but they're too hard to find. I mean, we, we found C's candy in 1972 where we find here and there we get the opportunity to do something, but they're too hard to find. Sit there and hope that you buy them in the, in the throes of some panic. Uh, you know, that you sort of take the attitude of a, of a, a mortician, you know, waiting for a fool. I'm not sure that, that uh, 
something, something. When I started out in 1950, I would go through and find things at two times earnings, and they were perfectly decent businesses. And people wanted jobs at those companies, and everybody knew they were going to be around, and they wouldn't buy them at two times earnings, and that's when interest rates were two and a half percent. You know, I went to the, I started selling securities when I was 21, and a Kansas City Life Insurance Company happened to be a fairly prominent company in Omaha, and the policies they sold you if you were buying life insurance from them, had a built-in assumption of 2% interest. The stock of Kansas City Life was selling at less than three times earnings. You were getting 35% if you bought the stock. No question about the soundness of the company. I went to the local agent. I thought, I figured, hell, I ought to be able to sell him a few shares of stock. I mean, the guy ought to understand it. I mean, he's got his whole life invested in this company. I went to the local agent, who'd been with him for 20 years, and his, his name was Moose. And I said, Mr. Moose, I said, you know, you're selling these policies with 2%. You may even have a few members of your own family, and you can buy into this company whose paycheck you depend on every month and, you, and whose future you, your, your beneficiaries of these life policies depend on and who you're selling them, you know, a 2% investment on. And you get 35% on your money. And he said, you know, stocks aren't any good. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't sell the, you know, I was a lousy salesman. I mean, well, you have to start with that. But, but uh, it, it just blew me away. I thought, sometimes I used to wonder if I was nuts.